Hi, I'm James Wise. I'm a partner here at Balderson Capital. We're an early stage venture fund based out of London. I've been here for seven years. I cover a whole host of investments, but specifically areas like productivity, security, and healthcare. And I previously worked in social impact investing and as a consultant. So venture capitalists get excited by lots of things. Um, and obviously the first way you can get as excited is through a great pitch. Uh, usually a pitch is 30 minutes where we get to get a quick understanding of the founder and the founding team, the problem they're trying to solve, a understanding of the product that they've built, and a uh, grasp of how they're going to build uh, a huge business. Uh, and so within that 30 minutes, what we're trying to get is a sense of all of those things, and most importantly, the passion and energy the team have uh, to achieve it. So the most positive signals I look for when evaluating a startup are always the team. The people that we back, generally speaking, are people who are taking on huge challenges, uh, taking a huge amount of risk, uh, working in very difficult and uh, high pressure situations, uh, and are up against huge competition. So what we're looking for is people we believe can take all of that on. I think it's an incredibly uh, difficult, stressful, but ultimately rewarding career. It's not for everyone. Um, but we want to make sure when we're working with entrepreneurs uh, that they can rise to that challenge. So that's got to be the first thing that we look at. Beyond that, not only do we want people who are passionate and energetic about taking on these big challenges, we also want people who are tackling big challenges in the first place. I think one of the things that people uh, don't always understand about venture capital is it's really something, it's an asset which you take to help you take on the biggest challenges. Not everyone needs it, not every business needs it, but it means for our business to work and for the businesses we work with to work, they need to be uh, huge, huge uh, outcomes. And that means you have to take on huge, huge issues. And so we're looking for energetic, passionate, driven people, that's a big positive, and people who are taking on these huge challenges. And you can really tell this when you start asking people, not just the obvious questions about their industry or the kinds of people they wanna hire or the kinds of product they wanna build, but the two or three questions after that to think, you know, are they really living and breathing this problem? Because ultimately it's a very competitive market and if you're gonna build a world leading product, you need to live and breathe it. So as much as you're looking for investment, it's really important that you get it right. So it's when we look to invest, we look for things that we think you should look for too when you're thinking about a venture capitalist. Um, often an investor is gonna join your board. They're gonna be someone that you rely on uh, for advice and introductions and support. Uh, and, but also someone who's going to challenge you, who's going to ask you the hard questions, who's going to push you when budgets are missed and uh, deadlines uh, don't come through. And so ultimately you want someone that you have trust and faith in um, to provide you with support, um, but also that you can work with, that you're not going to fall out with um, when the first uh, budget comes out or the first product fails. And so there's an element of uh, a relationship, an element of compatibility um, that you want to have with that investor. As well as that relationship, which I think is the most important thing though, you also want someone who has some understanding and relationships within the industry that you're, you're going after. Um, now, it doesn't have to be a perfect match. If you're building uh, the next cybersecurity company, it doesn't mean that you need to have a famous hacker on your board. It can really help to have someone who spent time in the industry uh, either in technology businesses because they have an understanding of how to build or scale that, or in the specific sector you're going after. And I think that making sure that the person you bring on board complements your existing relationships and doesn't just copy them um, is a big advantage too. So often we get asked what the difference is between the businesses we'd invest in as venture capitalists and venture backable businesses and other types of businesses such as lifestyle businesses, so small to medium sized enterprises. There's lots of different great businesses that are built in the world and a vast majority of the economy, especially in the UK, is some fantastic some hundreds of thousands, millions of SMEs. venture backed businesses are slightly different. Often, um, they can scale incredibly quickly in ways which uh, only certain types of technology allow you to do. Uh, for example, software. Um, you could build a great business in uh, laundromats and, um, and washing companies, um, and you could be very successful in doing it and have a big impact. But ultimately, you're gonna grow by uh, setting up store after store, buying machine after machine. Uh, the beautiful thing about software businesses is it's basically free to deploy another piece of software. If you download an app on your phone or you open a new window on your browser, it doesn't cost anything. And so these software businesses have this really unique way of scaling. 
um, which is what really attracts venture capital. Now, the challenge when you're scaling very fast is it still costs a lot of money. You still need a lot of people to keep up with serving you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of customers. And the scale of the opportunity is so big that other people are going to come after you very fast. The way I like to think about it sometimes is uh, most businesses, if they wanted to, could get to uh, the scale of a, of a Google, perhaps, or, or, or a Facebook. Um, what we're there to do is help people get there quicker. Uh, and so venture capital, as much as it's about money, it's also about speed. Uh, and for those businesses that can scale quickly, um, we're the right kind of capital. But it's not for everyone. So we work with a lot of uh, first-time entrepreneurs, and obviously everyone makes mistakes. Um, so there are a few common mistakes that every entrepreneur will uh, stumble across at some point, and I guess it's partly the job of an early investor or venture capitalist to help them avoid that. Um, the most common one is not listening to customers. I think a lot of people um, start off with a great idea, and they attack it from their own personal experience. They think, wow, if only this app existed for me, if only this website um, served uh, what I needed. Um, but very quickly you realize we're all pretty distinct users and customers. And instead, I think having a real understanding of who the user is, what they need, and what your customer wants is absolutely integral. And almost being able to take a step back from your own personal experiences occasionally and go and talk to customers, get into the field, spend extra time really understanding what that, you know, you know, older uh, grandma who's using that healthcare app needs, uh, or what these young kids at school are, are interested in at the moment. I think really understanding that is absolutely key. And I think a lot of founders can rush into building something for really listening to the market. Um, the second thing is, uh, as much as you're rushing into building stuff, it's rushing into hiring. Uh, the number one thing we look for early on in an investment is the founding team and the first few hires that they make, and making sure they're the right people, the people that are gonna work well with you, the people who are gonna support you in tough times, as well as be able to add to your skill sets, is a really hard thing to get right. And I think sometimes there's this um, rush that people uh, make to just hire whoever's available, rather than really thinking through what they need. And so a lot of the advice we give to, especially first-time founders is, take your time with your customers and take your time with your team, because they're gonna be foundations of everything else you build. So I've had a lot of different first meetings with entrepreneurs. I've met people on the back of the bus. I've uh, taken pictures on Twitter. And obviously, we go to a huge number of conferences and coffee mornings. Um, so the first pitch really, really differs. But there's a few things that always happens in the first pitch that I think is really important to get right. So much like when you're selling a product for the first time, you only have a little bit of time to really get the customer to understand uh, what they're buying here. And I think uh, the same is true with your first few pitches with a, a potential investor or venture capitalist. You only have a bit of time for them to really understand who you are, what you're about, what your mission is, what your product is, and how you're going to execute on that vision. And I think that's the goal of that first meeting, to get those core values across. Normally, this is best done with a pitch deck. Uh, PowerPoint and slides may seem a little outdated, but actually they're a really powerful format for telling a story with a few words and a few visuals. And so what I normally recommend is people um, spend half an hour going through a pitch deck, maybe 10 to 15 slides, explaining their vision and, and the mission they're on. Um, and before that, prepare by working out a little bit what the interests of that investor or venture capitalist are. Uh, things have changed a lot in the last 10 years. Venture capitalists used to be very few, and they had very little about them online. Now, most of us have pretty accessible websites, have some video content, probably have some public uh, social media content as well. So spending a little bit of time preparing and understanding the kinds of interests that that investor has so that you can understand, A, are they relevant to you? And B, if they are relevant, how you can connect with them, I think is really powerful. And then after the meeting, I normally recommend that people write down every question that they got asked um, and start preparing uh, answers to them. Because what you'll learn after the first meeting is that there's a lot of questions. Uh, but in the second meeting, you'll see 80% of the same questions. And by the fifth meeting, you'll have answers to all of them. So to summarize, spend some time beforehand preparing to understand the person you're pitching to. During the meeting, spend about 30 minutes walking through a pitch deck to really make sure you convey your vision, your mission, your team, and how you're going to go and achieve what you want to achieve. And afterwards, make sure you've really got a list of all the questions that they've asked and get back to them in a timely manner to show that you're on top of it.
So as well as venture capitalists doing due diligence on you and your company as an investment, it's really important you do due diligence on them as well. There's a few different ways you can do this. The best thing to do is take references. If they don't offer the references, you'll probably be able to find them through other companies they've invested in, often they're public on their website or on LinkedIn, and, and reach out to the CEOs of those companies. I think most of the time they're willing to give you a straight and honest answer, and venture capital is very much a relationship and reputation-based business. So they should be open to offering references for you to approach as well. So after you've met with a venture capitalist a few times, they'll often bring you in to meet with the rest of the team. This can be called a partner meeting. And there's a slight difference here in that you'll know one or two people in the room, but not all of them. So like before with your first meeting, make sure you research who's gonna be there and get to understand their own questions. But also ask the venture capitalist who's backing you, who's willing to put you in front of the rest of their team and uh, take that risk on you and say, what do you think the concerns are gonna be? So you can start to anticipate a little bit the questions of other people in the room because there is a big difference for you personally and sometimes for the content that you present when you're pitching to say one person versus a team of six or seven. So following up, after the meeting is kind of a tricky thing to do because you want to let them know that you're on top of things, but you may not want to overdo it. I've definitely had meetings where I've left and suddenly had 20 likes on my Twitter and 50 emails. Um, and sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming. So I think that the important thing is that you um, make a note of the real concerns, the two or three things that you really felt that that investor was pushing you on go away, think about it, and come back maybe two or three days later with some really thought out, concise, and detailed answers. I think it shows that you're someone who reflects, it can show that you're someone who can think deeply, um, but you know, if you ever do work together, you'll also be someone who will get the work done.